showers and thunderstorms today with strong southwesterly winds to 37 miles per hour. It's a numbers game, especially for the situation that we're in. We're coming off of a high water event here. The outdoors is not a hobby. It's not our passion. It is our way of life. We make the perfect cast, slow our breathing to execute a perfect shot, spend hours researching locations and techniques. Regardless of effort, we fail. This series is not about incredible bites or trophy animals. Our goal here at Day One Outdoors is to educate our viewers, utilizing new technology to offer a different perspective. Watch as we research new areas, plan out the day, and adjust to changing conditions. If not for other experienced outdoorsmen teaching me along the way, I wouldn't have this life. I owe it to them to pass this knowledge along. I owe it to you. Join us here on Day One Outdoors, and let's learn how to become more successful in the field and on the water from day one. On the cleats, I noticed that you know you can you can get away certain spots on the cleats, but you know there's a lot of a lot of like cobble here, and and those spinners will hang up if you just let it free drift. I like to just tick them right along the bottom. Oftentimes, what I like to do is mix it up a little bit. I'll cast straight across and give it kind of a three-quarter profile, and then uh, and then I'll cast a little downstream, maybe get a get a quarter profile. So what that fish is looking at is different angles of that spinner, that flashy thing down there. And if you got them coming at a quarter profile, that means you're casting a little bit more than quarter downstream, and, and it's kind of coming down. It's almost like looking at your finger. You know, you yeah, change, you change yeah, you change it a little way yep. until you kind of figure out what profile they're they're really hitting the best at. Then you kind of stick to that cast. You see that dark water below the rock there? Yeah, they'll come right up over that. Real shallow. Oh, there yeah, is. there he is. I yeah, knew it. Right where it should have been too, right? Right off that lip, yeah. Yep. Little purple spinner. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just doing that to you, Jason. God, that's the worst net job I've ever done. And you got that on camera. Jeez. Not bad. Technically, at 300. Who are you going to? Oh, right. In the time it took me to land the Chinook, Jason hooked two different fish. Was your first fish a Chinook? Yeah. First fish was Chinook, popped off, and then he landed a nice silver right after we got the Chinook in the boat. So, yeah, good size, over 20 pound Chinook, and then, uh, I don't know, I'd say what, nine, 10 pound coho? Yeah. You guys know me, I always like to do things differently, so I was casting plug for a little while, I was fishing for a little while. Those guys suck free fish in short order on spinner, so switching over to a little metallic blue spinner, give him a little bit different look, see if this works. There we go. Yeah, and he's already on. Another coho. And yeah, so Push it back in there.
I don't want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nice to have good anglers. If I only had good anglers, you know. Yeah, if I had people I could fish. talking and the Queets here reminds us of a lot of our coastal streams. Obviously this is a coastal stream as well down in Oregon and what's interesting about this is that a lot like our upper stretches of our river systems on the coast there's only so many places where these fish can hide. So right now we're floating through in about a foot and a half two feet of water and there's a dark spot of water over there that's maybe only three to five feet of water so it's still fairly shallow but we know that these fish are not going to be from all the way over there 50 yards on that bank over here to this little seam over here on this ledge. So that concentrates all the fish into one small little area. We're able to eliminate water. We know that they can only be in this one little spot. And I think there's gonna be one right there in that little back eddy. Oh, where Jason just cast. <laughs> yep. Ryan's on. Oh, we go. No, we came off. He gone. It's killer. <laughs> yeah, I don't way. think I want to go. <laughs> oh, he come on. Oh, right there again. What the hell am I doing? I have the best spinners. It's definitely the biggest fish of the day. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Big fish, boys. There you go. <laughs> yeah, a little snook jack. <laughs> Big fish of the day. <laughs> Fishfield is your one-stop shop online for the gear you need here in the Pacific Northwest and beyond. From salmon and steelhead, saltwater, trout and kokanee, even crabbing. Visit fishfield.com today to place an order with no sales tax and have the gear you need shipped fast. Fishfield.com, we have what the Northwest Outdoorsman needs. Every once in a while, a new lure comes along that catches every angler's attention. It could be because of all the irresistible colors and finishes, or the patented skip beat action. Or maybe it's the wide variety of sizes designed for salmon, trout, walleye, steelhead, mackinac, and more. But just for the record, we know one thing for certain. We didn't design the maglip to catch fishermen. Yakima Bait Company. We're going to run down to the bottom and see if we can't find them, them fish. They might be kicked up down below here. There's two riffles and, you know, they might be stuck on that bottom end. It's just about low water now, so... Uh, they usually get holed up. We'll see if we can find them. Spinners. You know, when we get down below here in some of that softer water, we'll jig fish them. Maybe throw some eggs in. Uh, I've got a spot there, Cody, down below here that probably really hooked them kings with those those bobber and eggs. There he is, nice. Nice. There you right. go, right there. Look at that big splash in there. Oh, he's a bleeder. <laughs> ah, he's a bleeder. <laughs> <laughs> just need to get Ryan out of the water so I can catch one. <laughs> well, Ryan and Richie here in just a moment are going to talk about how things are definitely a little bit different than what we're normally used to on the waterways that we fish. 
Oh man, this is fun. This fish is fresh right out of the ocean, just three, four miles. And these fish are not necessarily different genetically, but they're different in how they're managed. And Ryan just landed a really, really nice buck, just chrome bright. Hopefully I can get this guy in here too. Chloe, you know, we uh, kind of pride ourselves in, in being good anglers and giving back, doing our part. Perhaps we should let this one go. Female, you want to let the that female, one go? Yeah. Female, yeah. I'll let you go ahead and let it go. Sure, no problem. nice and strong yet. Uh, go ahead and return this back here. Yeah, return your that one back. Yeah. Got her. That'll be a good one. Yeah, you bet. There she is. She's a little smaller on the side we're looking for, but I mean, she's a female. She's got a good healthy. chance. And healthy. And the, it wasn't hook fat either. There's mm -hmm. no blood coming out, so no. she's good to go. She's good to go. Well, what we got here is one of our hatchery coho. It's got all the fins, but you could tell it's got a little bit, a little bit of markings from being in the net when it was a juvenile, perhaps. You know, and the, you know, here on a reservation, we're on the Quinault Indian Reservation, and we're up in our northern village, uh, fishing the Queets River. Uh, what we're after here are these nice bright coho. Uh, here on the on on a reservation, our regulations, you know, we we try if we're hooking, releasing, we let them go. We can bring them out of the water. Not like, uh, you know, state side sure. where they have just to like leave the, them in the water. And, the king that Cody yeah. just got, that was a perfect example of the fish that you guys are managing. Uh, we can keep all the all the fish with all the fins on them still. Because the majority of these fish right now are still mixed with the broodstock. These are the hatchery origin coho, yep, like this one here. Yep. Yeah, and then later on in the month, we'll start getting into the more predominant wild fish. Sure. <clears throat> so it's kind of nice to see these things. And, and they won't have the... Telltale signs of being in the hatchery, all these yeah. peeled up. There's some scars down here on the tail, you can see. Yeah. And then it's inside here, it looks like. Typical of a hatchery fish, so yeah. even though it's got this adipose fin, you said that you guys do put coat of wire tags Yeah, in they're all well. coat wire coated tags. Keep, that's the easy way to keep track yeah. of hatchery fish. Like yeah. You get all the data back from which, data. which hatchery you let go, yeah, once, when. Once them things return, yeah. they, they, they select broodstock them again, then they'll take the wire coat outside, mm -hmm. outside the head, the dorsal, or the, the snout, and then they'll put it under the microscope. Oh, oh man. Got him, coach. Get that on film. <laughs> <laughs> so you can take that hooky. I, I'm trying. It looks pretty, pretty eggy. Food, Tina. <laughs> yeah, buddy. We're catching so many fish, and I was even stopping fishing. Like, yeah, you deal with it because I got one on too. <laughs> Don't you worry about me. <laughs> Ryan, rooster tail. A funky chicken color. I think it's the same. <laughs> Back out of the water. Have fun in the ocean. That rooster tail, three quarter ounce, pink blade, lots of color, lots of contrast. Sometimes you just need a lure to wake them up. We've been running a lot of brass, a lot of silver, more subtle colors. I figured I'd throw something out there that would just get their attention. And it worked. Well, these two fish that uh, Jason and I just caught, looks like they have short tail sea lice on them right here on the back on this one. And then also on the back of this one here, which means that they have been staging up in fresh water for probably about two or three days. But as Richie said, ocean's just a mile around the corner. I mean, these, you cannot ask for a better quality fish, just perfect specimens, beautiful, beautiful fish. It's a 
Today we're fishing on borrowed time. There's a big, big system coming in here these next three, four days. The area up here is essentially a rainforest and that's exactly what they're gonna see here over the next week. They're supposed to get, I think it's up to eight inches of rain in the next four days. We're just now starting to feel that downdraft. A couple sprinkles here and there. So far today has definitely been a spinner day. Jason's proven it right now. He's waiting for the next bite, but spinners have definitely been working been better than anything else, which is surprising with the number of coho that we've caught today. Figured twitching would do really well, but you know, this last few years, everyone that targets coho has really shifted their focus to using almost all twitching gear for the most part. We're showing right here that don't forget about the spinner. Even down here to, close to coastal water, fish that you think would react to just about anything, we have not caught one twitching yet and everything for the most part has been on spinners. Salmon swim up to 3,000 miles to return to their exact place of birth to reproduce. Well, most of the time. Just been uh, the exact same fish. <laughs> See, told you it was little. <laughs> Sometimes you just need to redeem yourself. Miss four egg bites in a row on a bobber. <laughs> Finally get them. Ho ho, rolling up. Look at how bright that fish is. They're just healthy fish. There you go. Finally got them to stick. Bob Renee. <laughs> getting a bit twitchy. Oh, getting twitchy with it. Oh, got him, coach. Got him, coach. That feels like a schnook. <laughs> I'll just come in back clean up. I'm cheating by using bait, but. Oh, that's got some shoulders. Yeah, the coho, when you hook them, the first thing that they'll do most of the time is they'll come up, they'll splash on the surface, they'll cartwheel, they'll, whirl, they'll roll. Kings, when you set the hook, it's like you're setting the hook into a rock. It's just, uh, and then that's what this guy's doing, just keeping his nose down, called bulldogging, just pulling, just dead pulling away. That is a nice big buck there. Perfect, right in the corner. Fish is gonna be unharmed. This one's got a little color to it, so we're actually gonna let this fish go. The hook was perfectly in the corner, he's not injured. Nice big old schnook there. Go and hold him up there, Rich. <laughs> Look at those teeth. That's a nice one. Yeah, he's ready. <laughs> That's what's cool about these fish, even though that fish was all colored up, it didn't matter. After fighting for that long, that much power, it didn't matter. As soon as it got back in the water, shot right back in the hole. Awesome fish. Well, that system has finally arrived right on schedule, right at high noon here. And you know, for the last 
few days, honestly, the last couple weeks, it's been really dry out here. So does this rain really affect these fish? Well, it's, it's kind of a twofold answer. First off, like Ryan always likes to say, fish like water. So adding more water to the system can only help, especially since they're getting closer to the time when they spawn and they feel the water level start to come up. Between the rain coming down, the tide coming in, these fish should get up and start moving. And a moving fish is a biting fish. So second, what's gonna happen is that even though we're expected to get eight inches of rain here up in the rainforest stuff, up here around the Quinault and the Queets, it's not really gonna blow it out here today. Now it might in the coming days, but today because the ground is so dry off the riparian area, off the banks and up on the hills, and because these hills are, have so many trees and are covered up and have not been logged, that rain will take a long time before it gets down, gets into the dirt, gets absorbed by the ground, and then goes through the substrate back into the system. So right now the catch basin that we have from bank to bank is not really gonna grab enough water for this to come up really quick and blow out. So today, we're gonna to be just fine. We're gonna be wet, but the river system should be in shape. We have some leaves coming down because of the wind that's come through. But other than that, these fish hopefully will start biting maybe even better now that this rain is falling to get excited and start heading up towards their spawning beds. We've had an incredible day so far out here on the Queets River on tribal land with our guide, Richie Underwood. And what's great about fisheries like this is that they give you an opportunity to try new techniques new colors, new presentations that you normally would not try in areas where there aren't as many fish and so you feel like you need to revert back to what you know will work. For the most part, for just about every technique that we're doing, save for our bobber fishing, we're just running a spinning rod. Now for our twitching rods, we're running anywhere from a seven and a half to eight foot long rod. This, throwing the spinners, we're running eight and a half to nine and a half foot long rods. And that just allows us to get a little bit further distance out there, gets a nice thump with that blade and nice big long hook set when you're doing a sweep down towards the tail out of a hole. For line, this is 30 pound, maximum braid eight. It's really nice having that braided line because that helps you feel what's going on down there at depth. You can make sure that your spinner blade is thumping or your twitching jig, you can feel what type of structure you're going through and those light pickups that you might get. And then from there, we have a small fish field bead chain swivel. The reason why is because you will get line twists and the last thing that you want to do is get your main line all twisted up and run your day short because you get a, a wind knot when you're making a cast. From our chain swivel on down, this is 20 pound maximum ultra green. There are some big kings out here. 20 pound is definitely overkill for the coho, but there's logs, there's rocks, there's structure. These are my light steelhead rods. You need to be able to turn these fish. And when we have been hooking into these kings, it's nice having that 20 pound ultra green, knowing that it's not going to get cut off on their teeth. And then these spinners here that we've been running today, I've been running two different types of spinners. This one is just your old school bud steelhead spinner. I'm sure you guys have all seen that before at every tackle shop you've been to. I like running these things because of their color variety, but most importantly, because they're inexpensive. What allows you to do is not worry about snagging up on the bottom, losing $5 spinners left and right. If you do happen to lose one, it's not too bad. It doesn't hurt the old pocketbook as much. So these butt spinners are really nice because of their French blade design, weighted body, but most importantly, they're inexpensive. If you lose a bunch of them, it's not that big of a deal. And you can go out and buy a lot of different colors to fill out your tackle box. The other spinner that's been working for me at least here today, is your rooster tail. Now everyone's caught trout on rooster tail, but not many people use them for salmon, uh, which is actually kind of surprising to me. They still have that really nice elongated blade and some of these deeper holes that we're fishing. Having that weighted body with that thinner blade allows you to stay at depth in those deeper holes for longer and creates a nice big thump down there to get those kings and coho to react. When you have these smaller French blade spinners, it's a wider presentation and it grabs more water so it comes up in the water column. Having a rooster tail with that thinner blade and the weighted body helps keep it down at depth, thumping along in front of those fish's face. I'm trying to move up just because that log's right there. I'm trying to get them away. Lucky. Light rods, light tackle, and powerful fish fresh out of the ocean. Big one. 
probably the average size king for, for here on the beach. That's a, that's a hefty fish. Yeah, Pretty. Big old hunchback. Yeah. He didn't seem too faced. No. Okay. <laughs> Swinging and twitching, Jake yeah, through. <laughs> oh, son! Look, triple almost. Triple. <laughs> there's two. And there's three. <laughs> there's three. <laughs> Good job, Jake. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Twitching. And all I did was put a white skirt on there. That one there is one of my favorite ones. It's a mother of pearl from Fishfield, and just a tiny little maxi jig head inside of it. Three eighths ounce head. And we just tripled up that quick. We're trying to leave, but they keep biting. Yep. So we were right. 